Good evening, everyone. Your first forecast is brought to you by Stored at Home Rent to Own Portable Buildings. We started off with overcast skies and then that gave way to some sunshine. High pressure continues to build into tomorrow, so we're going to keep the rain at bay, at least for your Friday, but it looks like it will be back by this weekend. So most of the rain will be a little bit to our west. I think we'll see some sunshine, but there could be some cloud cover as well. So here's a look at your forecast for Friday. Temperatures starting off with a chilly 55 degrees at 7 o'clock by lunchtime 70 degrees partly cloudy skies we're going to see partly cloudy through the afternoon highs will be around 83 degrees so warmer than today but we do have a cold front that will move in this weekend i'll let you know how that will affect your weather coming up on abc 31 news Welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight. I'm Scott Beadle. This morning, Congressman Ralph Abraham helped the 115th Combat Support Hospital celebrate their centennial at Camp Beauregard. That is our big story tonight. Despite the muggy weather, people came out to celebrate and get a tour of the hospital. Congressman Abraham shared a few words to show his gratitude. I am so honored to be a part of this 100th anniversary of this 115th Combat Support Hospital. What they do every day is phenomenal. They save lives. They save our troops in the field, and they do it very well. Just to say thank you for being there, doing their job, doing it the best that anybody can ever hope for, and allowing that troop to come back home to their family should they be wounded or worse. Again, it gives the balance, it gives the fortitude, it gives the courage, it gives everything to those people that are fighting for you and I that allow us to sleep soundly at night to know that this they've got their back, that should things go bad for them and they have a bad day, somebody's going to pull them out and save their lives. The hospital has participated in World War I, World War II, Desert Storm, and the Iraq War. The Central Louisiana Regional Chamber of Commerce hosted the Commanding General from the Joint Readiness Training Center in Fort Polk. Brigadier General Patrick D. Frank spoke about military affairs and the local impact of the military at this networking event. We're here to talk about uh, the impact of uh, Fort Polk and JRTC on the region and what specifically Alexandria does as far as uh, soldier and army family quality of life. Alexandria does a whole lot for Fort Polk, uh, especially uh, England Air Park. Uh, we bring almost every one of our brigade combat teams into England Air Park, and that's the initial staging base for our operations. Uh, the hospitals here provide tremendous support for us and soldier and family quality of life across all the business sectors uh, throughout Alexander. Brigadier General Frank assumed his position at Fort Polk as Commanding General this past March after serving as Deputy Commanding General of the Army Cadet Command in Fort Knox, Kentucky. State police arrest the former Bunky Police Chief and Dispatcher for alleged misconduct in office. Their former Chief 48-year-old Bobby Corner and former Dispatcher 26-year-old Nicholas Dizel. Investigators say Corner allowed evidence to be unsecured, misplaced, and lost. They say he also failed to log items into the evidence room, mishandled a felony case file, failed to process traffic citations, tampered with the police surveillance system, and shredded official files. Dizel is also accused of disabling the surveillance camera in the maintenance building. The new chief executive officer of Feeding America, Claire Babineau Fontenot, paid a visit to the Food Bank of Central Louisiana today. She is the first Feeding America CEO to visit the local food bank. Feeding America is a nationwide network of 200 food banks and 60,000 food pantries and meal programs. It is the nation's largest domestic hunger relief organization and the third largest U.S. charity, according to Forbes magazine. I'm actually born and raised right around the corner in Opelousas, Louisiana, and um, I was recently named the CEO of Feeding America, which is the largest hunger relief organization in the United States. I'm so excited that I have an opportunity to come today and visit with the good people of this food bank right here in Sinlaw. Uh, they're doing great things. I wanted to witness it firsthand and try to roll up my sleeves a little bit and help. One of my highest priorities is to understand 
how it is that the, the network works, um, and then to optimize the people who are already wonderful and doing great jobs in the organization right now. Claire has volunteered in the fight against hunger and other causes since her youth. During her visit, she toured the entire food bank facility and volunteered to pack food boxes with students from Rapids High School. Well, you might smell barbecue in the air downtown tonight. That's because the United Way is hosting their 18th annual Wild Cook-Off. Local business employees put on their chef hats to compete in the cook-off. Each category has a winner decided by a panel of judges and a People's Choice Award voted on by the tips each team receives from the community. The event is free to the public. Former Grand Parish District Attorney Ed Tarpley joined the Kiwanis Club of Alexandria today to talk about Senate Bill 243, a proposed constitutional amendment that would require a unanimous jury decision for a felony conviction. You may know Louisiana is one of only two states in the union in which a person can be convicted without a unanimous vote of the jury. And our law is 138 years old. It goes back to the Jim Crow era. So this gives Louisiana a historic opportunity to change the law and to uh, make our, bring our law in line with 48 other states uh, and the federal courts. Because in 48 other states and in all federal courts, the verdict must be unanimous. We've been traveling around the state, uh, talking to civic groups, just to educate the public about why Amendment Number 2 is so important for Louisiana. Uh, this will guarantee that Louisiana citizens have the full protection of the right to trial by jury, which means that uh, in order for a person to be convicted beyond a reasonable doubt, all of the jurors must agree. There must be a unanimous vote of the jury. Senate Bill 243 is on the ballots for the November 6th election. A series of public hearings are being held around the state for the 2019 through 2020 fiscal year highway priority construction program. Yesterday afternoon, a hearing was held at Alexandria International Airport, allowing the public to share their views and concerns on construction project proposals for that upcoming fiscal year. The Joint Transportation, Highways and Public Works Committee conducted that hearing. Well, if you're looking for some fall fun, you might want to check out the Inglewood Farms Corn Maze. Uh, so it's going to be open all the way through November 10th. Uh, so we're hosting field trips all the way through November as well. Um, and the corn looks like it's doing great so far. And as we can tell this morning, cool weather is finally starting to arrive. So yeah, I think people are going to really enjoy it for a while. So what type of groups like to visit the maze? Um, I mean, one of our biggest things right now has been, you know, those uh, younger elementary field trips. I mean, those kids come out there and just have a really, really good time. I keep telling people over and over again, the by far the cutest field trip we've had out, had out there so far was 54 two-year-olds and their adult yeah. parents. And it was just, they were the only people out there. And more fun, the, the parents or the kids? I really don't know. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I saw one set of grandparents that I think had more fun than everybody. Uh, but that was great. Uh, they, were, they were playing tug of war with their little one and everything. It, it was a really good day. For the dates, hours, prices, or to schedule a time for your school or business, you can email ryan at inglewoodfarm.com. Shallots can help enhance recipes, and fall is a great time to get these plants into the ground. On this edition of Get It Growing, LSU Ag Center Horticulturist Dan Gill explains how this member of the onion family is easy to grow and comes in some different types. Family provides a wonderful selection of vegetables for our cool season vegetable gardens. Onions, shallots, garlic, chives are really great additions. They're easy to grow and they're quite productive. I thought I'd talk to you today a little bit about shallots because we grow them two different ways. We grow French shallots for their bulbs. We plant them in the fall of the year around about October or November and they're not harvested until late May or early June once the plants have formed their nice sized bulbs. These are chopped up and used very much like onions in cooking. Now when you buy your shallots you're going to see here that the grower has planted a number of seeds in each cell pack. When you get home, take these out, separate them, and plant them individually. They will not make bulbs for you unless you space them about six inches to eight inches apart. So keep in mind, these are not meant to be grown this way. They're meant to be divided up and planted out when you get them home. On the other hand, bunching shallots, or here we see multiplying shallots, these are grown in a bunch. 
These were planted from small sets. You can notice they're beginning to divide up into several plants. These we plant as is, and they make a clump of foliage during the winter. We harvest them by either cutting the foliage off and using that in cooking, or digging up the clump, taking off half of it, put the other half down, and take the other half inside to cook with. Bunching shallots then can be harvested all through the winter season. So remember, when you're growing shallots, decide what kind you want to grow and go for the right types for your garden. Forget it growing. I'm Dan Gill with the LSU Ag Center. All right, hmm. one last look at our weather. Yeah, well, do <laughs> I don't think you're going to cry with this forecast. It's going to ah. feel like fall. I know Nick loves fall. I do. Temperatures will be cooler by early next week. All right, thank you, Kim. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.